um, Verizon has to sell you the phone for it to work on their network. And so we think of the website as the equipment, which is your device, and then the SEO and the ads as the service that's coming down onto your device and getting it results. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the High Level Spotlight Sessions, where we showcase awesome marketers doing awesome marketing. Today, I'm joined by Ruan Marino. He's the founder of Developmark, uh, which is a full service agency focused on web design, local SEO, digital advertising for clients across a variety of industries. Ruan, thanks so much for coming on. You are so welcome. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm excited to talk a little bit about um, whatever it is that you know we're going to talk about. I'm sure it's going to be agency, and that's yeah. what I uh, live and dream to talk about. So I'm excited for it. Absolutely, we're all about supporting agencies around here. Um, speaking of which, so your agency is, I think you said like four years old. Yeah. So our agency, some quick stats about Development Mark. It's about four years old. We're a full service managed agency where we we do the client's website, we do their ongoing SEO, we do their chat. Um, and we have about 15 employees and about 200 clients. Nice. That's awesome. So take me back four years. How'd you get the first couple? Well, a lot of it was the methods that people don't like doing. And I just don't do anymore, like cold calling, cold email, trying to convince people you're worth. And overall, you start to realize that client acquisition really comes down to the product that you offer which is why Go High Level is successful because you guys have a service that works every single time and people really like it. And so I was in this really, really, really hedonic treadmill to where we were getting customers and we were convincing people to use our service, but our product and our service was not good. And so what was happening is we had like quick retention. We had really bad retention issues. People would stay on a month, two or three. Um, and then we came to the realization that sales starts with our product. And um, in the initial, it was a lot of networking meetings. It was a lot of, you know, just trying to convince other people that you can do stuff for them. Mm -hmm. And what is your, how do you fill the funnel nowadays? Is it mostly it's, referral? It's, it's a large portion is referral. And because we have a, a really significant referral program at Developmark where mm -hmm. clients are rewarded for bringing us new clients as well as employees. But a lot of it also has to do with YouTube and um, just the personal brand that I feel over time on my YouTube channel. Um, becoming the leading authority in SEO and talking about what's working now and what's not working and just really being that person that people can trust with the SEO information because we don't really have anything to sell. I mean, if you want to work with our agency, no problem. But if you want to be the type of person that's going to buy some online course, we don't sell that. And so people really started to notice that my channel started to grow and then people started asking us for help. Yeah. You, you mentioned that you, your YouTube channel is only two years old or something. It's insane that you, the following that you've built in that amount of time. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's like three years old now. Um, but it's interesting because like when I started, I had a lot of time to make videos. And now as we have all these clients and all these real <laughs> employees and all this real business going on, I don't have time to make videos. I have time to like do my business. So we're trying to figure out a good mix of how can we still post unique YouTube relevant content, but also still run my business as much as possible. Because the, 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 the con of doing YouTube videos is I have to be on those videos if I want to produce the type of content that I want. Whereas Developmark, I can work on my business and then other people will kind of manage it. Yeah, for sure. That makes sense. So talk to me about how you guys get results. Are you basically running funnels for your clients? Like, what do you focus on when it comes to when we say like, we deliver results? So our service is really interesting in the fact that um, very similar to some agencies, we always redo the customer's website. And the reason for that is because, and not just the landing page. So we don't take clients unless they're doing the entire website with us. The reason for that is because- So you'll actually say no, the if they're not willing to redo their website, you're like, sorry, we can't work with you. Yeah, exactly. And you know, nice. we get a lot of pushback. Uh, we get like, oh, well, why do we have to redo our website? And uh, we've overcome that objection. But mostly the reason why we do that is because when you think about your cell phone plan, when you think about AT&T, Verizon Wireless, anything along those lines, um, Verizon has to sell you the phone for it to work on their network. And so we think of the website as the equipment, which is your device, and then the SEO and the ads as the service that's coming down onto your device and getting it results. So the reason why we adopted that model is because it allows us to actually create more retention. It allows us to put customers into contracts. It allows us to basically predict our revenue rather than having clients turning on ads and uh, ads on and off every couple of months. And that's very Absolutely. hard to become predictable. So when you have the website, kind of what you mentioned, that's our software. And then the services section of it is running the ads. That's great. I love that analogy of like a phone 
um, provider and then the service coming in. And, you know, we really focus on helping our clients retain their clients, right? So it's all about like, what are the stickiest thing that you, things that you can offer? And I think you just pointed out that websites are incredibly sticky. And I love the fact that you'll actually say no. I mean, I feel like so many agencies, especially young agencies are so afraid to do that because to turn down money that's right in front of you can be a hard thing to do. At what very point hard. did you get comfortable doing that? We're still very uncomfortable doing it because we have a lot of people that are like, hey, we have a $10,000 ad spend. Can you guys just run ads? And we're like, no. <laughs> so we refer them to people. Um, but the reality of it is, is we've, we've seen the numbers and we know our business's numbers and we've just experienced that with customers where they're doing a one-off solution, the retention is never long. And so we've got to stick to our... Um, you know, we've got to stick to our, uh, our our terms of service, which says, hey, you can't go to a Verizon wireless store with a Sprint phone and say, I don't want your phone. I just want to use your service. They don't let you do that. And the reason why they don't let you do that is because their net promoter score, which is the, the scale of one to 10, if you would recommend a company to friends or family, their net promoter score goes down when you have issues with your device. And so, although it's not their fault because they don't make the device, they're the ones that are ultimately responsible for that client's entire experience with that phone. We see it the same way. If you don't have the website with us, we can't make the necessary adjustments that we need to make to give you a good experience and you will likely complain about it. And so I, I really came to this realization when we were selling on just SEO and WordPress developers were giving us the login to do the SEO. We would be a client, we would have the client for three months, but they would never fire the website company. And I was like, why are they not firing the website company? You know, why do they always get the good end of the stick? Mm -hmm. And it's because like, it's so hard for a business to move their website over. And that's why we've made it very easy for them. So once we have the website, our retention of our customers are really, really long. A, because they get better results and we have more control of their results. Uh, B, the service is better. C, we can make changes. Very soon, Developmark's going to have the feature where customers can log in and make very significant changes. And it's all going to be done with AI. And then also... If we're going to fix a bunch of issues with your SEO, we might as well just redevelop the entire site. Yeah. I mean, most sites are pretty outdated and they're, you know, they don't even have the capacity to rank well when it comes to factors like speed and things like that. So that's a really smart analogy. And it sounds like you've definitely hammered out that, uh, that pitch to overcome the objection and explain why it's so important. But I think it's a really important lesson, especially for young agencies. While it sounds great to just, take these clients that show up by saying no and focusing on clients that you know you're going to have predictable revenue from you avoid the roller coaster that most agencies are on and that roller coaster is very painful it's very hard to innovate do new things progress when you're constantly in this cycle of like holy smokes what just happened to five of those clients from last month we're in panic mode right now the house is on fire I think that's so smart. You only focus on clients where you know that they're going to purchase the stickiest product that you offer, essentially. And Chase, I mean, it creates a lot of objections and it's a longer sale because mm -hmm. the reality of it is you don't need someone's DNS. You don't need all of these calls with them. You don't need their new pictures. You don't need all of that when you're just running ads. That is what's really attractive about having a business model that runs just ads, like disruptive advertising, like sure. their turnaround compared to Develomark, ours is like eight weeks to get the campaign up and running. Theirs is a week or two. Mm -hmm. And so it's very, very, very lucrative to have a model to where you can just set up ads and like go and move. But for Develomark, we're not in it to do things really quickly. We're in for sustainability and long-term. And not to mention that when you have a client that's been with you for 12 months, what is their incentive to go for another 12 months? Well, we've set up a situation to where Developmark goes, Chase, you built a site with us in the last 12 months. You've had a great experience. We want to extend your contract 24 months. And you go, okay, well, what am I getting with that? And we say, well, we're going to redesign your site this year to match all of Google's new guidelines. In this year specifically, it's Core Web Vitals. Mm -hmm. And then next year, inside of the contract, we're going to redesign it again. Because as your business changes, your website's going to have to change. So we really see that device like the iPhone as the equipment. You got to upgrade Just it like when year. you trade in your iPhone. <laughs> yeah. And for a new one, your contract extends. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty smart. And I mean, I think people can understand that. Like 
that's why I love thinking about websites as sort of an on-demand type of service because everything changes so fast that it's like, you, know, you don't want to be on a two-year-old iPhone, right? You want the newest camera, you want the faster chip, you want all these things. And we can do that every year, but nobody wants to hear that they have to pay for a new website every year. So I love the idea of cre- you know building that into the program and just knowing, hey, every year, yeah, we're going to upgrade you to the newest, coolest stuff. And that would actually get people excited. Um, what about other lessons off the top of your head over the past four years? If you're talking to an early agency entrepreneur, what were some of the, uh, the major hurdles that you wish you could have uh, side-skirted had you have known? I, I definitely think that with new agency owners, there's this perception that um, SEO is dead. And um, you know, search engine optimization is one of those things where it's an older tactic. But little do people know that that's the future <laughs> is the SEO, because as we become more prone to cookies and, you know, we become more prone to privacy, organic search listings are very, very critical. So in, in terms of w- avoid uh, mistakes I would have avoided was get very clear with what you're looking to do. Um, in the book, Think and Grow Rich, there's a section where he talks about definitive purpose. And if you don't have your definition of what is, what is your company doing, then you're not going to build something sustainable and you're not going to work towards anything. I mean, we spent two years doing all of these random things. Like I remember one time I was so focused on courses and then I was focused on like all of this other stuff. And then I found the model that works for me. And now we're kind of like, we just have this clear pathway to growth and I'm able to build a team around it. So if you're trying to grow and you're trying to scale to a business to where you have hundreds of employees or, or dozens of employees, whatever your goal is, just make sure that you're, whatever you're selling, that model fits within that. Now check this out, right? I mean, it, with, with the way we sell, if we know we're always doing the website, well, now I have tasks just for that. Cause I know that that's always going to happen. It doesn't matter. I always need an employee to manage this. And so it makes creating the jobs a lot easier and it makes the scale a lot easier. When you have to do all of this custom SEO work, when you have to do all this custom ad work, people don't scale that because it's so custom and it's so hard to grow. That's why someone who's literally going to specialize in just selling go high level as a software, as a service to these small businesses, that's scalable because you're giving them the same thing over and over again for a specific use type. When you're trying to say, let me try to reinvent and use go high level for this type of company that's never, you know, innovation is great. But if you're trying to build a company that's a million a month in revenue, you don't need to innovate anything. You just need to follow a system, a system that works over and over and over again and focus on the acquisition. So one of the biggest challenges that I had when I started was just being clear in the direction that I wanted my business to go because, you know, there's this perceived notion out there that like you need to sell courses or you, you know, you stop doing SEO and just do Facebook ads or pay per show model or whatever, all of these different models that, you know, um, web gurus are teaching. I would say stick to what you like doing and make sure that it's systemizable for the direction you want to take your business. Mm, Yeah, I love that. And you guys didn't niche into a specific industry, but it sounds like you have niched into a very specific model which in my mind is sort of the same thing, because like you said, it's scalable. And that I feel like is the goal of every agency is to get a product set that is scalable. Um, Mm -hmm. You talked about goals. What is the goal of Develop Mark? Do you guys have a certain number, a certain size, a certain profitability level? Like what's the end goal for you guys? So we want to be the service provider where every time a competitor searches in their local area, Develop Mark site is at the top. That's one of our major goals. And that starts with just getting every single customer in every area that's the best. Um, What we found is very interesting. When you manage a website for a successful business, they always get really good results. When you manage a website for a new business or a bad business, they never get satisfactory results. So really the key to develop market and our strategy for growth is targeting in these geographic areas, the biggest dogs in our industry that we wanna target. So we may want the best dentist in an area and that dentist has to have a develop mark site. And when somebody, a competitor looks and they go to the bottom of that website, our develop mark logo is there until we have every vertical that we want to work with every single state or town that we want to work with, which is all of them. And the biggest dogs in that area for every single vertical we work with, I'm not satisfied. And that goes for every country as well. So the wow. goal is, yeah, the goal is massive and it's, it's, it's almost unattainable, <laughs> uh, but that's what big goals are. So like Chase, if you, where are you from? Outside of Philadelphia. Okay. So we're pretty close. I'm in Connecticut. Uh, let's say you typed in Philadelphia dentist. That first result needs to be a development website. Let's say you typed in Philadelphia DUI lawyer. 
that lawyer better be a development mark website. Philadelphia plumber, that should be a, a, a development mark website. And that doesn't happen unless you get the brands that are already doing well. So we've got to build this reputation of high class and excellence. So those companies want to have that conversation with us. It's also probably a, a pretty unique advantage during the sales process where it's like, hey, we, we want you. We're not going to work with any of your competitors because they're not good enough for us. Like it's, we belong together, essentially. <laughs> That's a pretty <laughs> unique pitch. <laughs> Yeah. And, and Hey, we talked about Josh Nelson and he does it very similar. Uh, he's got a really good business and like every plumber dies for his service. So and we've heard it. Um, so it's, it's very similar, but we just don't niche down as of right now. And the only reason why we don't is because like we fall in love with so many people and it's hard mm. to just like work with one industry. Yeah. I mean, but again, as long as the model is very tight, it sort of is its own niche, right? You're not going to work with a business that doesn't fit into the model. So in a way, it is a niche. Um, it's just not industry specific, I would argue. Very Ruan, true. I don't want to keep you for too long. You dropped some serious nuggets. I think you're, you're going to light a lot of light bulbs with the analogy that you guys are using as far as like a website being your phone hardware and the services on top. Um, if people are interested in touching base with you, where should they head? Um, probably my LinkedIn profile or my YouTube channel is it probably a good place to start, um, or contact Developmark. I mean, we, we, we talk to a lot of people, um, we don't sell anything to agencies, so I'm always open to giving people advice. Um, and so, you know, you, LinkedIn would be the best place because I can't awesome. message on YouTube. You can't message people on YouTube. You can only message on LinkedIn. So, yeah, yeah. That's kind of strange how they haven't built that in yet, but awesome we'll be sure to put the link to the youtube channel below which is super impressive i mean you've got i think over a hundred thousand followers on there yeah it's amazing man congratulations i'd like to do more i'd like to do more but well, you're a time. man of lofty goals i love it <laughs> you have to <laughs> well ruan thanks so much for coming on to chat with us you are so welcome chase thank you thanks everybody for watching we will see you in the next one